Welcome to this event, uh, New Pathways, Apprenticeships and Training in Publishing, um, hosted by SYP North. Um, I'm Rosie, I'm co-chair of SYP, um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, full disclosure, I'm also an apprentice <laughs> on the apprenticeship that we're going to be talking quite a lot about tonight, um, but I'm just sort of wearing my SYP hat for this event and asking the questions. Um, yeah, just a little bit of housekeeping for I um, in pass you over to our speakers. Um, if you'd like to ask any questions, please use the chat function rather than the Q&A function. Um, and I'll try and get to as many of those as possible in the last 15 minutes. Um, or you can go on Twitter and use the hashtag SYP New Pathways and we'll take questions from there as well. Um, there's live captions for this event. Um, you should be able to see them, but if you can't, um, just click the live caption button at the bottom um, and it should be a full transcript there. Um, so yeah, that's the end of housekeeping stuff, I think. I'm really excited about this event. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to be able to talk about apprenticeships, training, um, and where that kind of sits in terms of widening accessibility and opportunities in the publishing industry. Um, so I'll now hand you over to our speakers to introduce themselves quickly. Um, Vimbai, if you'd like to go first. Sure. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much, Rosie, as well. Um, I'm Vimbai Shiri. Um, I was skills coach at LDN Apprenticeships for about 14 months almost. Um, and I now um, am back to sort of running my own business and uh, working as an independent editor and um, also run some training courses. Uh, specifically at the moment, I'm just setting up one at the moment, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, which is an introduction to InDesign, which is specifically aimed at editors and marketers. And I'll be running that in the summer in association with, uh, get, in association with uh, Get Into Book Publishing. Um, pronouns are she, her, by the way. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for now. But I think I'll be able to speak a little bit more about what I do in a bit more detail a bit later. Yeah, brilliant. That's great. Uh, Helen, if you'd like to go next. Hello everybody, so I'm Helen Bugler and I am, I took over from Vimbai as the LDN uh, Apprenticeship skill, Skills Coach, so I've been in the role since January. Um, I come to the role from Macmillan, I worked in publishing, um, in textbook publishing, HE textbook publishing for all, all of my career, which is 30 years, so I started off as a sales representative for the company and then I moved into editorial and I worked in um, commissioning and development and both at the same time which is quite unusual through my career and I ended up as editorial director for six or seven years for the textbook division and then I thought time to do something to sort of give something back in a way and, and to start on, on the teaching which I'd always always been involved in all the way through my career I've always been working with editorial assistants and um, other young people helping them develop their roles so it, it just seemed like a, a good match for me and seems to be proving so so far I'm loving doing it and enjoying working with all the all the apprentices very much so um personal pronouns she her um is there anything else I'm supposed to be saying Rosie or how does that cover yeah, that's everything <laughs> that's great thank, thank you. you perfect uh Jess if you'd like to go next that'd be great hi I'm Jess I am an art worker at Bloomsbury Publishing I work in the academic division um I started last October and I finished oh October 2019 and I finished last month it's April wasn't it last month Christ that's recent um and I design things out in my spare time as well as for work because I can't get enough of it and yes my pronouns are also she her perfect thank you so much um Eleanor oh hi um I'm Eleanor Rose, pronouns are she, her as well. Uh, I also work at Bloomsbury uh, alongside Jess, we work quite closely together. I'm a production assistant. I also obviously was part of the first cohort for the LGN apprenticeship in publishing. Uh, prior to that, I was juggling a few jobs. So I was working for a tuition company. I was doing some bar work. I was doing freelance photography work. Um, decided that I wanted to go into publishing, found the apprenticeship, um, completed that and then was made permanent at Bloomsbury. So I now work 
full time at Bloomsbury. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to sort of contextualise a bit what we're talking about, give a bit of background. Um, and Vimba, I wondered if you could start by just talking a little bit about the training that you offer. Um, yeah, and, and who it's for and that kind of thing. Sure. Well, I do quite a bit of uh, training and have done and had done a bit of uh, training prior to joining uh, LDN. So I used to uh, work with uh, writers, uh, both one on one and also in groups as well, just um, mostly around short story writing, actually. Um, and I did that in conjunction with um, an organisation called the um, the Kane Prize for African Writing. Um, I've also taught on an editorial skills, uh, it's like an editorial skills uh, program, which we took, I took that to um, Uganda with a, a colleague and friend of mine, Ella Wakatama, who's the editor at large at Canongate Books. Uh, and we spent a couple of weeks uh, sort of teaching editorial skills to um, editors from across the continent, which was great. Uh, and um, I'm now sort of currently working on putting something very similar together to, uh, to offer as training in the UK as well. Uh, and um, so what's coming up sort of in the most sort of uh, near the nearest future is uh, probably where are we now? We're almost in May, so um, early summer. I'll be working with uh, Heather O'Connell uh, and uh, who works for um, Get Into Book Publishing. And uh, with her and alongside her, I will be um, putting together an InDesign, uh, an InDesign course specifically for editors and for um, marketers as well. So we know obviously InDesign is, uh, you know, vital for anyone who's in design or, um, you know, artworking, they use it all the time and so on and so forth. And it, whether you need to use that as an editor obviously varies depending on the company that you work for, but it is a very, very useful skill to have. And very often you may find yourself if you are an editorial assistant being handed, um, you know, some proofs, you know, that was all at least something that's at proof stage and asked to maybe take in the changes. Uh, and if you've not used the program before, it can be a bit daunting. So it's going to be very specifically uh, geared towards the sort of skills that you'd need to know just to make, be able to sort of find your way around the program and to sort of take in these changes without anything going wrong. And if something does go wrong, know how to handle it without sort of panicking. Um, and also sort of just being able to sort of put together um, AI sheets and, you know, sort of put together a, 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 a book. So um, that's what we'll be doing um, in, uh, sometime in June uh, so that'll be coming up in June and that's uh, that'll be sort of over a two-day course a two-day training course that we'll be running and then later on in the autumn uh, I'm planning to um, put together well I'm, I'm in the cope in the process of putting together hoping to roll this out uh, in, uh, in the autumn it'll be the editorial specifics sort of training all the skills that you need to have as an editor um, you know, this, it's almost like once you actually get your foot in the door of publishing, that's when the real learning starts. And there are lots of different skills that are needed uh, and lots of different types and styles and um, approaches towards um, editing. Um, and, you know, very often it's, um, you, you know, young editors can feel quite sort of isolated and not really sure kind of what to do when you've actually got a job in front of you and how to approach it, how to, um, you know, communicate with authors and so on and so forth. So uh, that course will be coming up in the autumn. It'll be a, a sort of short course, probably run over, um, you know, four to six weeks. And it'll be specifically for uh, young editors who are either aspiring editors or already in the industry and just in the early stages of their career. That's brilliant. That all sounds so good, especially in design. I think anyone that uses it often has a very love-hate relationship with it. It can be so, <laughs> so fiddly. Yeah. Sure that course will be great. Yeah. Um, I love it. So, yeah. Um, it, yeah. So, I mean, it's completely indispensable, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um, Helen, I wondered if you could talk a bit about um, the apprenticeship um, and what that's about and what's kind of new about it and how it works. That'd be great. Certainly. So the, the apprenticeship, this is the only apprenticeship that's running at the moment in publishing and it's set up a couple of years ago now, I suppose, didn't it? Um, but yeah. the first cohort 
of which Jess and Eleanor were a part, has just gone through and just got their results now. Um, and then, but new people start every month. It's not something that has like a September start or anything. It, it's a roll on, roll off type program. And what happens is that you, you either get a job, um, you're either already in a job in, in industry, and then you're an in situ apprentice and, and you can start doing some extra training through us. Or more likely, most of the apprentices come through either through LDN, the jobs are advertised on LDN as an apprenticeship role, or the publisher themselves might advertise them as an apprenticeship role, but working with us. So you can see them in both, both places. And essentially what you have to do is you do a year long program, which, which is in, the, in your job, most of the time you're doing the job. So 80% of your time you're doing the job, 20% of the time, which might be a day or it might be you know, split up across the week, however it's, it works in your company, you do apprenticeship work. And we have online modules that you have to study. We have um, coaching sessions with me or, or a new coach is just about to start as well. Um, and we have group sessions. So every, every month we have a live session where we share a lot of um, different information about different publishers across the group. The group all works together to, um, to explain what they do and to talk about new trends and that sort of thing. And we have master classes as well. And, and over the course of the year, you have to put together um, three projects, which are trying to show really that you've met the standard that the apprenticeship requires. So, so evidence of what you can do and some of its skills and behaviors, stuff like teamwork and um, being proactive and being passionate about things and all that sort of thing. And some of it's actual knowledge that you've got to, you know, you've got to know about the publishing industry, which is mostly about the critical path from, from a book when it starts out as, as an idea all the way through to it, it hopefully selling magnificently at the end. So, um, you, you put together these three projects and a bit more evidence around it. And then after 12 months, hopefully that's the usual length of it, you then go into the assessment phase. And that is essentially a, a project you have to do with a presentation and um, a bit of a discussion with the assessor. And then you, you get the apprenticeship, which is a level three apprenticeship, so sort of a level type level, I suppose. Um, and um, you get the, hopefully you pass and, and you can, um, you could get a distinction was essentially it's, it's could, can, can you pass? And to pass, you've got to cover everything. You've got to have you know, some insight into all the different areas in publishing, which is partly why it's so good because it's so broad and you really get to know about so many different aspects of the industry, not just the bit that you're in. And we can talk about that in a while, but that's, that's what it's all about. So it's essentially a year of proper, proper work experience where you're, you're being paid as well with 20% of that time studying to find out much more about about the publishing industry um, and so far I have to say it's going really well I mean the people who've who've done it and Eleanor and um, Jess will talk to this but they, they've well and Rosie's doing it now <laughs> they're loving it um, we're getting a lot of positive feedback both from the people who are doing it but also from the employers who seem to be really happy um, so, and we are expanding massively. If, if you've been looking out for jobs, you'll be seeing that more and more of them are coming up. So um, it's definitely a way that the industry are embracing at the moment and hopefully we'll do so even more. Yeah, that, yeah, I think the thing that, that's so great about it is definitely what you're saying, that it's such a holistic view of the, the industry and it really helps you to kind of um, see how everything connects really. Um, yeah, um, so my, Next question is to the apprentices, Jess and Eleanor. Um, so what would you say kind of drew you to an apprenticeship over the other routes into publishing, um, whatever they might be? Um, Jess, if you'd like to go first. I, um, so my main reason was because I loved learning, but I hated school. So university was out because I would never have the patience for it. Um, and I find I work better through working um, and practically doing the job. Um, and I'd always loved books and I'd always wanted to be a writer. And I figured if that doesn't work out, then I might as well be in the industry. Um, so I was looking for jobs in advertising and in publishing for about six months before the job at Bloomsbury came along. So I applied for it and after a little bit of hounding at LA, uh, LDN, I did get the job, thankfully. Um, so yeah, but the main reason was because of my learning style and 
um, because I'm dyslexic, I struggle with education, like the stereotypical form of education. So I thought that the apprenticeship would probably work better for me and I'd be able to actually achieve something rather than not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's the great thing about it because it's, um, yeah, it doesn't need kind of like specific qualifications and is just looking at you being the, the creative person that is needed for the industry. So yeah, um, Eleanor, what about you? Yes, um, so initially, admittedly, and a lot, I, I've said this to a lot of people, I never wanted to do an apprenticeship um, through the exposure that I'd had uh, just from these horror stories about what an apprenticeship was like. It was a, um, a lot of kind of labour work and just being paid for not learning anything. Um, and I kind of had this distorted view that all apprenticeships <laughs> were like that. However, um, I saw that it was advertised and like Jess, I didn't go to university. Um, I grew up in a house where my older siblings all went to university and are very successful. Um, but I still didn't want to go to university. And um, but again, like Jess, I really like learning. Um, I'll continue to learn in any way that I can. And the apprenticeship as LDN kind of sold it to me, if you like, was that you will be learning every week, every month, but you will be working at the same time. And it was it's the kind of um, best of both worlds, if you like, because uh, having spoken to a lot of people that are doing a master's in publishing, for example, they are getting solely the learning part of it. And then there are people that are working full time in publishing um, and that's the kind of yeah professional side of it. And so I felt that I guess the apprenticeship was, yeah, the best of both worlds. I kind of had that happy medium of, sort of learning while working at the same time. Um, and then just kind of echoing what everyone else is saying about uh, how broad it is. The variety really interested me as well, because I was going for the role in production. And though like a lot of people at the time had no idea what production was, they were, you know, were saying one month you'll learn about editorial, one month you'll learn about sales and marketing. Um, so, yeah, kind of, I suppose kind of similar to what Jess is saying, it's a learning thing, it's a variety thing, it's a not going to university thing that kind of drew me in. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I think the... Sorry, can I just add to that, Rosie, that the, the you can enter with a degree as, as well. It's open to people with a degree I don't think you're allowed to have a master's in publishing and do it. I think that's ruled no. out. But apart from that, you're allowed to be, uh, you can be an undergraduate in anything or not. It, it, it's open. And it, and in fact, um, LDN doesn't use um, CVs on applications. It's a, it's a modern CV route. And I'll, I'll come on to talk about that perhaps a bit later on. But, um, but it, so it, either way, I, I don't want people to think that if you've got a degree this isn't for you because it it, it it very much is as well it's for it's for both groups in yeah that's a that's a really good point um that, yeah perhaps we should have said before because i've had people ask me as well that they've done a degree can i not apply to it um but yeah yeah that's great thanks for thanks for flagging that um and this is a question to everyone because obviously you've got experiences on both sides of um training trainee um apprentice and I don't know what the opposite of that is. <laughs> um, but what would you say are the main sort of personal benefits um, and professional benefits to doing an apprenticeship or doing training that you might not have access to through the sort of um, quote unquote traditional routes into publishing like um, work experience internships um, and that kind of thing? Um, I don't know who wants to jump in first. Um, I don't mind going. Um, yeah. yeah, so certainly for uh, from a training uh, perspective, it's it's very good when you're able to um, sort of tailor the training to uh, for job specific skills. That's that, you know that's that that's really really useful. Uh, and I certainly would say that in terms of sort of coming off the apprenticeship, I'm sure the apprentices will agree that you know you really do get the broad brushstroke. There's sort of no area of publishing that you don't cover. Um, which is fantastic because it's quite easy, I think, uh, I don't know if Helen would agree with this, it's quite easy actually to go into one area of publishing, so for example, editorial in one um, particular uh, sort of publishing house or sector of publishing and kind of sort of work your way up uh, that route and sort of just be involved with your department departments very easily and then you may know very little about what goes on in other departments and certainly I know from my work on the apprenticeship and uh, training on the apprenticeship that 
you know you get this broad sort of brush stroke and you you're able to at least speak intelligently about every aspect of of the industry which i think is is amazing um i think uh certainly with the apprenticeship as well i'm sure one of the the you know the personal uh, and professional benefits is you know learning to balance sort of working and studying and learning about the industry and learning about the industry that you're going to be in and being able to also do that within a publishing environment with a publishing team around you so you've also got your sort of your work team but you've also got the the team that you build up and the you know the camaraderie that you build up within your cohort and, and across the cohort um, and I would say maybe going on uh, sort of beyond that and, and you know maybe this is the one 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 thing about the publishing apprenticeship and um, because there's so much to learn about the industry as a whole as you know I'm sure um, everybody you know will, will, will agree with this so much to learn about the industry um, to then go on and do some sort of more um, sort of specialized uh, study and further study and training around your particular job role um yeah obviously has uh, you know many many useful uh, job specific um benefits too so i'd say that in a nutshell yeah i think sorry yeah <laughs> i was gonna say from um obviously been by side it was obviously really beneficial and i think all of us that had been by as a skills coach really benefited from that um and i'm sure likewise with the new apprentices with helen um from a learner's point of view uh professional and personal it's kind of what benefits weren't there um so personally I grew um a lot of confidence a lot of um self-esteem I joined the apprenticeship not feeling great about like my self-esteem etc etc um and kind of I don't know I can't pinpoint exactly what it was that helped that it's just kind of being in that environment getting that um achievement that I even managed to secure the apprenticeship especially now that it's obviously so competitive as well um and I think professionally, I learned what it was like. Though I was working uh, full time before, I hadn't been in a nine to five typical like office job, and that exposure really helped me. Just just being able to sit in an office five days a week, obviously when we were back <laughs> in the office in London, um, had really helped me. Um, being around people that were professionals that had been in the industry for a really long time. Um, again, sort of what Echo and what Vimba was saying, learning about the industry as a whole, that the fact that you there are no um, stones unturned or whatever the saying is <laughs> where it's like we learn about everything and so I kind of went in um, not knowing anything and I've come out feeling almost a bit advantaged so uh, some of my colleagues for example were saying you know that I always knew a lot more what was going on in the other departments because I'd learned about them and I even just the basics and you know you learn a lot in the workshops in each month and then you can go away and do extra research and find out how it works at your specific company um, and I think that that really helped as well, that you're, you're kind of given the, um, the kind of fundamentals of it, I suppose, of publishing in each department. Um, but there is not time to go, cover absolutely everything. And so you have that kind of initiative that you have to take to do the extra research and um, find out what it's like at your company. So in our case, it was Bloomsbury. Um, so, yeah, so professional and personal. And then also kind of um, the, the mix of it, if you like, the fact that we were studying and working at the same time. I learned a lot about things like burnout because we were having to juggle two things at once essentially it was uh you know it, it's similar i suppose if someone was doing a degree but they also had you know a job on the side it, it's a similar sort of thing where i i was exposed to meeting a lot of deadlines and sticking to schedules and pleasing a lot of people so i think all in all it, it kind of has shaped me to be a, a lot more um I suppose experienced in a lot of ways um, and a lot more confident in myself and in my work um, so I think yeah in all in all aspects of the way it's uh, it's been a good thing. <laughs> I completely agree I um I had a couple of moments when we were in the office I'd be talking about something to the other art workers I work with and I'd say something and they'd go, I've no idea what you're talking about. And I'd be talking about something in production or marketing and because they just hadn't been exposed to it and they hadn't needed to learn about it for their job and like in their studies, they didn't understand it. And I find because you learn about other departments, you can almost, you respect their roles a lot more and you also see their roles a lot more significantly. Like production, before I got into publishing, I knew about design and editorial and you don't really know about the others. And you only realize when you actually get into 
publishing how vital production is and how it's kind of like the brain of the whole operations once it's left the editor's hands. Um, and I definitely, I, when I started, I also, I wasn't going through a great time. And mostly thanks to Vimbai, who is a queen, um, but also just because I think the apprenticeship, it gives you focus and you know you want to succeed and you want to do well and you have work to do and you have goals to set. It almost gives you that structure that you don't realize you need. So I found over the course of about six months, I went from really struggling with a lot of things in my life and at work to doing really well and being asked to write articles for the bookseller and the Young Publishers Society, which was pretty cool, I'm gonna be honest. So I think it does, it gives you quite a lot of balance, but you do also have the negative side where you have to figure out like how to not burn out and how to juggle your mental health and your social life and looking after yourself with working and realizing that working every weekend is probably not a good idea for a year. It's not good for you. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. And it, there are a lot of positives that I found from the apprenticeship. I think just additionally as well, um, the networking I found is really important um, and it's been a huge benefit from the apprenticeship. So um, obviously when you, you join and you're part of a company, so like myself and Jess, you're part of Bloomsbury, I've now got connections just naturally in my team because I work with them, email them a lot, etc. But also, and this goes for any kind of training that people are interested in, not just um, this specific apprenticeship, but we had a cohort, there were 16 of us, um, and so we all learned about each other's publishing houses. Um, and I mean, it took a while just naturally for us to, you know, be comfortable with each other and share all the things and that. But um, then it was like, you know, we had a WhatsApp group and we were discussing things regularly. And that's so important in publishing as well. It's one of those industries where it's, it's kind of small, where everyone knows everyone, people move around from different publishing houses. Um, and so the networking has been another added bonus because you have a group of people you know from work and then a group of people you know from the apprenticeship as well. I, you've covered a lot of the things that I, I've been thinking of myself, um, the network, confidence, the, these the things that I'd written down, um, collaboration and all those sort of soft skills that you, that you learn. You get a mentor, don't you? You get, like um, Jess was saying about Vimbai, you get a mentor who's somebody who's there to help you through, to guide you. If you're on a fixed term contract, for instance, who can help you as, get towards the end to think what next and how you're going to, um, to move on in your career. Um, and I think that the, 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 a big point is this thing about uh, su such a lot of jobs when you start them, say you're an editorial assistant somewhere, you know, you, you might have quite a narrow job, actually, or it might not be so narrow, but it might be lots of bits of different things. And they don't actually or you don't even know what order they're all supposed to be in. If you're an editorial assistant in a big company, you're asked to do this and you're asked to do that. And you're asked to do something else. And you think, well, I don't even know how these all fit together. Never mind how the whole process works from start to finish. And I think that that you can you first of all you learn better how your role fits into the broader company and that's really important then you learn how other companies in other parts of the industry are different you know so trade is different from journals different from textbooks and so on which is interesting in itself so you can learn about all those different um, companies that are out there and those different roles and it might be you know so many people think that they want to be as just to say you know want to be an editor when they join and actually there are so many fabulous roles in publishing and you know if you're a creative type maybe marketing would be a really suitable role for you or a, a design role or creative role like Jess has got so there are all sorts of different roles that are out there and I think you might as you learn about them you might think you know actually although I'm doing this role now and I'm loving it and it's fine my skill set might be slightly more towards such and such a role and, and you could learn about that and then maybe sort of segue into that within your own company or move on to a different company altogether in due course with that solid year of 15 months of um, work experience and qualification behind you. Yeah, I think also um, some departments are very uh, technical specific. So design is very much, you just work with mostly in academic, you work with production and editorial and that's it. And if I hadn't been doing an apprenticeship, like a lot of, uh, like a lot of, my team haven't um you don't really like you still don't understand what production do you don't understand the broader industry 
and I realized quite early on if I hadn't been doing an apprenticeship I never would have really understood all those things and I think that's where if you don't really mind just keeping it focused on design then not doing an apprenticeship is perfect but if you want to understand more and like I I want to do about 50 jobs in publishing I'm gonna be honest it's all very interesting and I think doing the apprenticeship almost gives you the opportunity to go well I've learned about rights I understand more about rights so I'm going to go for a job in rights because I understand the industry and I understand rights and it's an entry-level role so it gives you that power to go actually no I I enjoy where I am but I want to go here because this is really interesting and I think it gives you that power that maybe uh, a degree in production if there's one for that uh, doesn't really give you so I think it, it does really help. Yeah that's great and I think you've already like tapped into the thing that's so brilliant about apprenticeships or training is that it's quite rare that you have the opportunity to learn and to learn and do a job um, in that kind of structured way and the self-esteem thing really speaks to I think the independence that you have but at the same time there's a level of kind of structure and guidance which is really great. Um, I wanted to move on to kind of asking um, putting the putting apprenticeships and training in to the context of the publishing industry sort of as a whole um, and talking about accessibility and widening um, opportunities. We've already spoken and touched on a bit about the fact that you don't need a degree to do the apprenticeship. Um, and Vimba is obviously talking about the training you've done and how that's been quite international as well. Um, and Jess especially, I know, wants to speak on this a bit in relation to disability. Um, I just wanted to quickly bring in, I'm leaving questions till the end, but a few people have been asking about um, apprenticeships in the North um, and whether you can still do the apprenticeship if you're not in London. Um, I'm based in the North, I'm based in Manchester and working at a Manchester-based um, publishing house and I'm doing um, that apprenticeship and I'm aware of a few other people in my cohort. I think someone's in Staffordshire, um, there's another person in Manchester. Um, yeah. Um, am I right in thinking, Helen, that and it's any publishing house can can sign up to? And any publishing house can sign up to it. And in fact, I think only a third of our apprentices are actually based in London. But that said, they're mostly based in the southeast, of course, because of Oxford and Cambridge and Brighton is quite a popular place for publishing, isn't it? But um, but not all. I mean, the people are all over the place. And increasingly with the remote learning, we've just had a, a group of apprentices start. Um, all five roles were remote. Um, for Taylor and Francis so you you can find increasingly you know it might not suit everybody but there are roles increasingly that are remote and, and you know you do it all as we're doing it we're all having to do it at the moment anyway you do it all by zoom yeah that's great thanks I just yeah I wanted to cover that in the accessibility thing because obviously that's um quite relevant but Jess if I go to you first on this question about um accessibility um so could you ask the question again, please? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so what do you think apprenticeships, sort of widening training opportunities in general um, can do for the publishing industry in regards to accessibility and equal opportunity? Well, um, so I, like I said, I'm dyslexic. I really struggle with school. I didn't want to go to university because I knew I'd never do well at university. And I was kind of told by my school, we're not interested in helping you. <laughs> so find your own way. Um, so I kind of just started working, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I bounced from job to job. Um, and I realized that an apprenticeship after talking to my parents would be a really good idea because you do learn and you, which is what I love doing and you do work, which is also what I love doing and you get paid, so yay. Um, and so I kind of realized that it would be the best way to get a qualification that unfortunately a lot of people want to see. They want to see that you've got a degree in something. Um, and when that doesn't work for you, an apprenticeship's kind of your way in and it's kind of your foot in the door, one to an industry, but it also gives you a qualification that you can use to your advantage. Um, and you, you learn so much on apprenticeships, you don't really realize it. Um, and I think apprenticeships in an industry like, like publishing 
is really good because it just it gives people who can't go to university for whatever reason whether it's their disability whether it's because of their background because they don't have the money because of where they live and they just whatever it is it just gives you that opportunity to get into an industry that you might never have been able to get into 10 20 years ago um and i think also it brings in more voices that publishing never would have heard before because there is a stereotype in publishing that people look sound act a certain way and it's not true because in reality the face of publishing is whoever works in publishing and if you don't sound or act or look a certain way then you are the face of you are still the face of publishing and you can be the face of publishing so if you have a disability whether it's dyslexia ADHD I can't think of any more I'm really sorry <laughs> Um, whether it's because of your background, because you can't afford to go to university for whatever reason, you still have the opportunity to get into publishing, which is an industry that relies on voices. And I think, as we've seen over the past year, the importance of voices and people being heard, no matter where you're from, no matter what you look like, whatever it is, the importance of that it's just as important in the books that we're reading as well as the people who are working on those books and people who have unique perspectives. Uh, we can offer far more to an industry than people who, other people who are exactly like them, which is really horrible to say, but it's true, sadly. Um, and like I spoke to um, some senior people at Bloomsbury about potentially printing our books in a dyslexia friendly way because in the publishing industry there are no top publishers who do that and it's really bad so it's kind of like you have the opportunity and then you have the connections like we've been saying you have the connection to then talk to people mm. and make a bigger change and get more people into the industry um, so I think it's really positive but it also gives you the power to get somewhere where you never would have been able to get to before and I think if you think you can't get into publishing whether it's because you can't read a book or you struggle to pay attention for long periods of time because you didn't go to university whatever reason like you can get into publishing and you should because you are exactly what publishing needs because there's probably about two percent of people who are like you in the industry and you're probably more valuable to it than a lot of people who are already in it, which is a horrible thing to say, but it might be a little bit true. Whether people want to admit it or not, it's just a little bit true. I think that there's a sea change in the industry, and I think it's only happened really in the last two or three mm. years. I think it's a very recent thing that people are starting to think um, that there could be different routes into the industry. Um, and that's not to say that the traditional route isn't still very much there and a perfectly good route of going in, but, um, the industry realizes that we need to look for you know intelligent capable people but not necessarily people all as Jess is saying who are all exactly the same mm. um so I think you know curiosity is also you know hugely important thing it, you've got to, you've got to be intelligent you've got to be capable you don't have to have a degree but you've got to be both those things and you've got to be very curious and very enthusiastic about 100%. publishing about Books yeah, definitely. Or product, publishing yeah. products um, and I think you know although although um, LDN go well because they go for a blind approach what they're saying is a blind you know no CV what they're saying is it's not not that they're not interested in what you've done don't tell us about what we've done it's not that they're not interested in what you've done it's that that you they're interested in your voice and who and what you've got to say about what you've done and that everything counts, everything that's relevant and useful and people might be excited about in publishing. So, um, you know, don't, I, I don't, I want people to feel just like Jess and Eleanor that you can get in without a degree, but I also want people who've got a degree to, who are still struggling to get in for one reason or another, to think hard about what they have got that might be of use to, to the industry. You know, the industry wants to be more accepting of people from all different um, 
walks of life, not just because it's a good thing to do, which, which genuinely I think the industry thinks that it's a good thing to do, and it's sort of ethically a good thing to do, but also because it's better for the industry. The industry needs to have a wider audience. It needs to produce books and products that more and more people want to read and build up their, their market share and everything else. And so it, you know, it makes sense on all fronts. It's not just a sort of altruistic thing. They want to do it because they want to broaden their market. Um, so I think it's about, you know, if you want to try and to, to try and stand out there in the crowd, um, wh whichever your background, whatever you've done so far, you need to just start thinking about, you know, what are you bringing to the industry? You know, the, think how many CVs and everything else that people must have to read. Well, I know because we used to get, you know, absolutely masses of CVs in for every entry level post. What, and, and if they're all very much the same, what is it? you know why would your stand out what is it that you've done that's a bit different where's your passion what is it that um that that's bringing you to the industry what why do you think you've got something to offer and that's what people people are looking for which might be that you've done a great degree at a great university and you've got all these skills it might be that or it might be something quite different it's just about thinking about what what the employer wants not just sort of ticking boxes if you like um you know, it's one of the things that I think that that the, the industry is looking for at the moment is is people with a bit of a commercial sense about them who, who you know, it's not just about loving books. Loving books is great. And people who are in the industry who don't like books, not a good place, really. But it's not just about loving books. It's about understanding the marketplace, understanding who who you're trying to reach, whether there's an audience out there that people, you know, that you you understand much more than they might understand and you need to talk about that you need to be there in your cv and in any kind of or not cv if you don't through question and answer thing like like ldm you need to talk about that what your how how you obviously you're just starting out you, you know i'm bringing this to the mark the, your industry sounds a bit grand and then over the top and you're only just starting out but if you've got a different perspective on things that's really useful and that's what publishers are looking to hear from mm -hmm. so yeah, that's really that's really great advice. I think. Thanks, Helen. Um, Vimbai, did you have anything to add from a sort of training perspective on, um, yeah, on on widening um, equal opportunity and accessibility? Yeah, I think um, Jess and Helen have more or less covered uh, almost all of um, what I'd written down. Um, I certainly think um, in terms of you know the industry as a whole, I'm I'm glad to see this sea change and. Uh, I think, you know, one of the sort of biggest sort of barriers to entry, I think, for a long time, you know, had also been this whole kind of publishing industry and being very sort of London and Southeast centric. And it's really good to see that changing now. I think I sort of caught in the comments, forgive me if I, I didn't quite see the name, but I just saw the uh, the word Wales and the, and the Welsh flag. Somebody was asking about Wales and I think actually there was... Um, at the beginning of the year, of course, there's a bit of crossover between uh, me leaving LDN and Helen joining. So we had a bit of time to work together. And one of the uh, apprentices that we've both had an opportunity to mentor is actually from Wales. Uh, and she works for a company in Stroud and uh, completely remotely um, at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really good to see things becoming less uh, sort of le London centric. Uh, um, and so I think it's definitely about sort of opening your mind and, and, and thinking about the wider opportunities that there are out there. I think very often uh, we come, certainly I come across this a lot, sort of lots of young people wanting to get into the industry and they ask me questions about, it's always sort of around the big five publishers or the sort of well-known ones, um, but actually you can get a really, and this is sort of very similar to how I came into the industry and how I progressed through the industry, you can get a very broad, very thorough uh, and very good uh, publishing education with uh, smaller independents and also, you know, thinking about, um, you know, the skills that you bring to the table, uh, which, um, you know, may uh, you may have got elsewhere that are, you know, to do with, um, sort of, you know, um, good, obviously good uh, literacy, literacy skills, if, if you're thinking of going into editorial, for example, but if there are skills that you've picked up elsewhere that can be, um, you know, used within the industry. It's about sort of discovering what those are and seeing what you can bring to the table there too. So um, yeah, I would certainly um, 
say have, have have a broad mind don't always think about oh i've got to work for one of the big five and it, you know no slur on any of the big five you know they're all, all great places to work um, but there are many 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 opportunities uh, and not just in trades publishing as well um, and not even necessarily within um print books as well you can think about sort of, uh, audio books and uh, you know digital publishing companies there are lots of different opportunities out there so yeah audio is there's just so many jobs um publishers hiring for kind of people working in the audio side at the moment I yes think. all of which need these uh, you know key skills so the core yeah. skills that you'd pick up uh, you know as a as a young publisher are easily transferable yeah that's and quite great a lot of the bigger publishers are onto this and realizing that they do need to have offices so uh, quite a, i mean pearson's got an office up in yorkshire now and i think yeah. one, one or two others aren't there who are branching out um so it's worth looking out for that and i definitely um would say about the point about the smaller the smaller publishing houses and the, the different all different and, and different roles taking a job in production even if you want to be an editor you could go into production to start with go on the if you can get onto an apprenticeship scheme so much the better because then you get that broad education and with a year's work experience and you say I've done this year in production it was really interesting I loved it but actually through the apprenticeship I've learned that this is what I want to do and that's a stepping stone then into into a role bringing experience with you which is, as a lot of you will know out there people looking for some kind of experience if possible and so a year working even in a production role even if you want to be an editorial with the apprenticeship would be hugely interesting for a future employer. Definitely, that's great. Um, I'm going to go to audience questions in just a second, but I just wanted, Eleanor, was there anything you wanted to add to that um, discussion? Uh, no, I mean, I, I don't want to kind of waste time <clears throat> knowing that there's a lot of kind of questions that have been put in the chat, just saying I am um, trying to check some of the, um, the questions on there and putting any um, yeah, thank you. I can there. see you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tapping away. I'm trying to put things easy about like LDN and stuff on there. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. think there is an age limit for apprenticeships. I've just seen that come up. I don't. I don't believe there is. We've got uh, apprentice, one apprentice at the moment who who is certainly not, you know, a young person. Not, mm. not, no, you know what I mean. There's plenty of opportunity for any any age. Yeah. That's great. Um, quite a bit of interest in Vimba, your training programs. Um, someone has asked, um, is the InDesign course open enrollment? Um, I'm in the US. Um, and if yes, could you share how to register for this course? Yes, it is open enrollment. Um, details should be going up uh, on the, in the next couple of weeks. If you would all like to uh, follow me, I'll put my um, Twitter. Um, in the live chat, so let me just put one of my. I'm at at Bimbai Shiri. That's B I M B A I S H I R E, and I'm also on LinkedIn as well. So I'll be putting all the details out on LinkedIn, and it'll be a registration via Eventbrite, and SYP members will be eligible for a discount. So that's uh, something to. Um, to note in there but yes details will be up um within the next couple of weeks that's great that's real i think there's a few other um questions about the um in design courses so hopefully they'll be they'll be covered by that um trying to see some more um So this is a question for Jess. Um, I'm also interested in artwork or a design role. Do you need a design or art degree for getting into these positions? I think we've kind of answered that a bit in that, no, you don't, <laughs> um, but which um, apprenticeship did you get? It kind of, it kind of depends. So my apprenticeship is, well, the apprenticeship that we've all been on is the publishing apprenticeship. So that's, as we've been saying, it's across all uh, of publishing. Um, but when it comes to design roles, if you wanted to apply for a design role rather than an, uh, an apprenticeship, if you didn't think that was for you, it does depend on the publisher if they require a degree or not. So you'd have to look and it depends on the publisher and what they're doing. And it sometimes depends on the imprint. You've just got to be a bit careful. But if you are looking for a design role at the minute, there is one at Bloomsbury. <laughs> hey. So shameless um and it's in trade so it's in trade academic not academic it's in trade 
adult and children's. So it's basically my role, but I believe it's a digital form. So you would be working on covers. Um, but if you are interested in design or you're just curious, or you know someone who's curious, send them to the Bloomsbury website and the careers page. And it's like the top one, so you can't miss it. So you have no excuse. Um, but if you're even just a little bit interested, but you don't think you're worth it, you should apply for it because you're definitely worth it. And you should definitely apply. But it does depend on the publisher and the job if you need a degree or not. So you just got to be careful. But I always go into it as if I don't need a degree and apply because you shouldn't need a degree. But it just depends. That's great. That's really useful um, and good. Good promo. <laughs> promo for you through there. Um, yeah, there's some there's kind of quite a few specific questions about like application process and um, who can apply for the apprenticeship. So what I'm thinking is I might um, try and put together a blog um, for SYP North and get all that information out at once because yeah I want to make sure we do it justice and um, also get through as many questions as possible so Rosie just on that note um, are you okay I mean I know that some of us have been putting stuff on the chat about our LinkedIn and stuff um, I mean as long as the others agree um, we can send you obviously our details via email if you wanted yeah. to circulate that if people had specific questions for example about artwork or they can go to Jess production mm. likewise they can come straight to me um, so yeah, I, I'm sure just to, yeah, we can email our details around if you wanted to circulate those. Yeah, great. I'll, yeah, I'll work on putting something together. We have a newsletter and um, and a blog. So I'll, I'll try and get something up on there. Um, another question I, I've got, which is um, quite a good, oh, Eleanor, I think you've replied, but I'd be interested to hear your, um, everyone's thoughts on this, um, which was, I have an offer for an MA in publishing in September why should I do an apprenticeship instead of a master's? So it's kind of a good opportunity to pitch the apprenticeship. I don't know who wants to jump on that one. I, I would, I would, no, I say if you want to go do the MA, fine, go do, and you know, I wouldn't want to put anybody off doing an MA. An MA is a much more theoretical uh, course. You know, it's much more uh, of an academic pursuit. When I was in um, publishing, working in publishing myself, uh, we were very keen to take on people with an MA in publishing, but just as, equal, as eager to take on people without one. So it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a, a definite, well, I'm in now because I've got the MA in publishing. Um, the difference between that and, I mean, obviously you might not get uh, an apprenticeship with LDN, um, which is a good as reason any not to, you know, but I think it's worth persisting. We haven't got any jobs. I don't think advertised right now, but we've just had a whole load of jobs. We've just had eight jobs go through at Bloomsbury. And I think there's a whole about six Pearson jobs gone through and there's lots more in the pipeline. So do watch, follow LDN Apprenticeships. You're welcome to follow me on LinkedIn and I'll post up anything that comes up as well. So you can see it there. Um, I would say the advantages of doing our kind of route in instead are because you get that work experience, you get that practical work experience and you learn about it. And yes, you're not working at that theoretical level. You're working at a much more practical level, but you're getting the work experience and the education together and you're being paid which is nice you might not be being paid a fortune but you're not paying out fees there's a big difference between you know okay earning reasonable money not great but not actually paying any fees out which obviously uh, in a master's you, you would be paying the fee and and not earning so and, and at the end you've got that year in publishing that you've done which is just a fantastic element on your CV. I know in a master's that you would have no doubt an in internship or a placement or something, so you'd get some useful work experience. But it is it is really a quite a different a different thing. I mean, essentially, you're learning the same thing, but it's a much less, um, it's a much more work based practical course into the same route, and, and it's paid. Um, yeah, I, I just want to add on to what Helen said. Sorry, Sorry go on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think as an employer necessarily you'd you think either was better than the other. Certainly I wouldn't have done as an employer. I'd have been interested in both people, looking at them both and 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 thinking, you know, what else are they bringing apart from just those things in the end? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, sort of echoing what Helen was saying, and, and I put that on the thing as well. I don't want to sort of say, obviously I'm slightly biased because I did the apprenticeship and not the MA, um, but equally, yeah, I think it depends what you get out of it. Um, and I've been in touch recently with different universities and I think um, kind of going off of that point, what Helen was saying, it depends what you're offering because um, have a look at if you're interested in doing a master's in publishing, what the universities offer because um, some of them will have like a university press, um, whether that's a small one um, 
I know some people have been contacting me recently because they're just doing almost um, like a dummy uh, book as part of their um, their masters in publishing, and so they kind of get that experience of working in the industries as such. Um, but it's for the university press or the university magazine or journal, whatever it is. So um, I would just say if you are looking into masters, that it, that might be something to to look at as well to see if they have anything like that where you spend a month or two doing a kind of book getting it printed etc working together like that so you have that kind of um almost like practice run um before kind of going into the actual industry um so yes you can do the masters but what else are you doing alongside of it and how are you making it practical while you're there if that if that kind of makes any sense that's great yeah that that does make sense that's brilliant um so i think we're sort of coming to the end now um i've saved the chat um because there are so many questions about the apprenticeship um and yeah i'd like to cover all of those properly and thoroughly um questions about um eu uh eu nationals and and people with visas and being able to join on that so i think um, I can I can cover those in a in a blog post later, um, and Ellen has also said she's happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, but yeah, thank yeah, you. as am I. If there are any that have come for me, please do feel free to contact. I, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has if we've not addressed them in the panel so far. Yeah, same same here. Link up with me on LinkedIn, and I can answer your questions in the the chat thing on LinkedIn. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much um, to you all for being generous with your time tonight, but also generous with yeah, offering offering to take questions like that. Um, was there anything anyone wanted to shout out um, before before we go? Well, I don't I'd just like to say good luck to everybody out there and, and hopefully um, you know you'll get get what you want. And I think if you persist and you and you're not too choosy about you know i'm only going to work for x but see what else is out there there's some amazing companies that my apprentices have just started i mean rosie we were in, weren't we just talking with them only this last month with new people who've just joined and you know companies that i'd never heard of with fantastic opportunities that people were taking up and um you know have a keep a broad mind to what's out there and, and don't don't be too you know it, not every, we'd all love to work at bloomsbury i'm quite sure but not everybody can but you can still get a foot in the door in all sorts of fantastic companies so see what's out there and and and, and remain optimistic I think that, yeah that i definitely would... a lot. sorry remember go on. Oh, no go on go on i'll go after you it's okay um one thing i've definitely learned from speaking to people at bloomsbury in all roles um one thing they've all said is I didn't start in the role I wanted or I'm not even in the role I want to be in it's you start here but your goal is to get here and you've just got to be patient and be persistent and be like have faith in yourself and push to get to where you want to go and it's not always the route that you think you're going to take but you will most likely reach where you should be and where you deserve to be by the end of the by the end of it all but yeah I think, yeah, I think it's important sorry I was yeah. just gonna say just uh, Vimba do you want to go <laughs> Oh, no, go on. I'll go after you. It's OK. No, no, it's fine. You go. Yeah, okay. yeah I was going to really just echo what Helen said to to, to be persistent and uh, just to, uh, you know, if it's OK, just to have a couple of minutes just to share um, part of my routine. routine. I did uh, actually my first degree was uh, a BA in publishing uh, at uh, what is now the UAL it was then the London College of Printing. And then I went on to the Masters at SOAS. Um, but my route into publishing was, you know, I didn't even think about the, you know, the big five because of the, the places there were so competitive. Uh, and I also had a very young family at that time as well. So I needed to be in something which uh, was not too far from where I lived, uh, which would still give me those skills. And I actually ended up knocking on a lot of doors. Um, you know, I tried the traditional CV route, applying for jobs and so on and so forth. And I just got rejection after rejection after rejection. And the in, in the end, it was a case of, right, I'm going to take the ball by the horns. You know, went on to, well, it was, the, I'm really showing my age now, but it was Yellow Pages. It's now Yell.com. And I just made a list of all of the publishing companies that were in a sort of a five mile radius of where I lived. And I literally just rang them up one by one. And I got about 
probably about the eighth or ninth person on the list said, okay, yeah, come in for an interview. And I just went in thinking it was just going to be an interview. And that ended up being my foot into the door. It was actually supposed to be a six week um, freelance job, which ended, I ended up staying there for like about uh, five, six years in the end. Uh, and that is really the place where I cut my teeth. It was a very small niche um, illustrated book publishers. And I went in there as an editorial assistant and came out of there with design and production skills. And I actually credit that job. That really was my apprenticeship because I learned so much more than just how to edit at that job. And I firmly believe to this day that had I not done that job, I probably would never have applied for and got the role as skills coach when I worked for LDN for that 14 months. So um, it's never something that I would have thought, well, when I finished my degree, I want to do this. It was just what was there, what was available, but it actually ended up being one of the best uh, working experiences I've had in my life. I talk about my former boss, Hamish McGibbon, all the time, wherever I go, because he really gave me the freedom to fail and to make mistakes and to learn from them. And he, he taught me sort of step by step how to edit, how to communicate with authors and stakeholders and so on and so forth. So, you know, a lot of what I am today in terms of my the skill set that I have now, I owe to both him and uh, the colleague that I mentioned earlier, um, Eloa Katama, who's been a great friend and mentor to me in, in, in the industry. So I really would say, you know, don't give up keep persisting, maybe look at some of the smaller companies, maybe look at some of the companies in different sectors. If you've got your heart set on trade, you know, trade is one of the most competitive uh, sectors to get into. Maybe think about something and maybe think about educational publishing, for example, or, you know, um, STM or different areas where you can still, you know, have a, a, a good experience of uh, working in publishing not necessarily in what you thought you were going to work in at the start. So yeah, I really want to wish everyone the best. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be getting lots of messages to say that you've got your first jobs or, yeah. you know, you're applying for your first jobs and so on and so forth. So all the best to all of you. And thank you so much for attending and listening to us. It's been a real pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Vin. But I think everybody's personal, personal stories that you've all shared have been so um, inspiring really and just powerful of the like very varied ways that people people end up where they do in publishing so thanks for that and um, before we go I'm just going to quickly plug uh, next month's SYP event which is going to be hosted by the All Together Network from Hachette um, they are Hachette's UK, Hachette UK's employee network promoting people from low socioeconomic and regional backgrounds um, so keep an eye for details on that, the times to be confirmed, but it's going to be on the 20th of May. And we've also got a book club coming up, which we're doing with Oxford on the 6th of May. Um, that'll be at 7.30pm and they're reading um, Girl A by Abigail Dean. And that's just informal, really nice opportunity to kind of build a bit more of an SYP um, community and, and have a nice chat about a really good book. Um, so yeah. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. Thank you so much, um, Jess, Helen, Eleanor, and Vimbai for all your contributions. It's been really, really... Thank you, Rosie, as well, for organising and sharing tonight. Thank you. <laughs> You're yeah. letting us come on. <laughs> no worries. My pleasure. Yeah, yes, thank you Thanks, so Rosie. Thanks, everyone. Thank um, you. Bye. Thank bye. you.